All right, guys, we're going to do a couple of odds and ends here. We're done with chapter four. What are we going to do? We're going to talk about binary and ASCII values and bitwise operators and an OR and shift, shifting to the left and shifting to the right. Now, if you need an entire lecture on binary, I'm expecting that you've already had the concept, but if you have not, then please text me and I'll direct you to a video about it. I'll post it for everybody, right? So first one you text me, you know, wins, I'll go ahead and upload it, you know, I'll post a link to it. So what is binary? Well, a binary number is just one that's made out of zeros and ones, right? It's in base two. And so if you'll just trust me, that's the value one, that's the value two, that's the value three, and that's the value four. Why is that? Sorry, I'm gonna make these four digits rather than three, because this is the ones place. And if we were in base 10, what humans normally use, then that would be the tens place, the hundreds place, and the thousands place. Because this is 10 to the power of zero and any number to the power of zero is one. That would be 10 to the power of one, which is 10. That would be 10 to the power of two, which is 100. And this is 10 to the power of three, which is 1,000. Well, binary is base two, so these are powers of two. Two to the power of zero is one. Two to the power of one is two. Two to the power of four is eight. Excuse me, two to the power of two is four. Two to the power of three is eight. You just see it's doubling each time, right? 16, 32, 64, and so on. So, with that in mind, how do these numbers add up to one, two, four, eight, and so on? Okay, so this is the ones column. So we have one, one, and we have one, two, right? So that adds up to three. What if they were all ones? Well, we have one, one, right? We have one in the twos column, we have one in the fours column, one in the eight column, and if we added all those up, that would be 15. Okay. So, say we were curious about representing a number in binary. Like, what if we asked the user for a number, right, and we wanted to convert it to binary? Let's just do the binary number 15, right, because I already said that 15 is equal to all ones. Fortunately, there's an easy way of doing that. String S is equal to integer, the wrapper class, not int lowercase, but integer with a uppercase i, dot to binary string i. At this point, we now have a string that is composed of zeros and ones. System dot out dot print ln string, right? Heck, we could print them both out, right? i plus a quote equals end quote plus a string, right? We can see what that looks like. And lo and behold, 15 is a 1111. One, one, one. Now normally, we might want to carry this out to eight bits rather than four. Why? Because there are eight bits in a byte. You've heard bytes all over the place. Right, you know, I have an 11 megabyte memory chip and you know, I have two gigabytes in RAM and I have this, that, and the other, all measured in bytes, right? Well, eight bits adds up to a byte. Stuff like that, right? Well, what would that be? There's no ones, but there is a two. There's nothing in the fourth column, but there is an eight. There's nothing in the 16th column, but there is a 32. There's nothing in the 64 column, but there is a 128. You get the idea, it's just adding each time. So 128 plus, there was nothing in the 64 column, but there isn't a 32. Plus, there's nothing in the 16th column, but there isn't the eight. Plus, there's nothing in the fours column, but there is a two. All right, now if I can add that up in my head correctly, eight plus two is 10, right? plus 32 is 42, 
plus 128 is 170. I may have even added that up wrong, but heck, let's find out. Let's use the two string function to find out what 170 is in binary. Why did I say 127? 127 is all ones. It's, not, it's equal to seven ones to be precise. Let's ignore Y for a minute. I meant to type in 170. I don't know where I got that 127. I had that on my brain. 170 should equal 101010, right? Just like that. Okay, and it's in eight bits, right? It's got eight little zeros and ones in it. Now, some languages give you a function that'll convert and let you pad it out with the correct number of zeros. What do I mean by that? I don't want it to say 15 with only four zeros. I want it to be one, two, three, four, one, 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 one is equal to 15, right? So I wish that this integer to binary string would pad with zeros. It doesn't, it's kind of a drag. So we would need to use string.replace. Well, we need to pad it out somehow with zeros. And it's gonna take a couple of steps to do. So we're gonna talk about those individual steps. Firstly, you can use string.format to do some padding. It's not gonna pad with zeros, not in this particular case. You can get it to pad in base 10 with zeros, but not this. So if we do S is equal to string, capital S, dot format, and we print the string out with a percent %s, right? Maybe we should have renamed this as a string2, right? String s2 is equal to string.format, just like that. And then we print out s2, system.out.println s2. In parentheses, it's gonna just print the same thing as s was, right? We're gonna change it so it does something different though. Let's go back to printing out 15. And so the string that it prints out has only got four bits because 15 can be stored in four bits. And so two binary string returns a string that's four long. What if we specify a width here, right? What if we say, I want the string to be eight characters wide. So percent eight S, right? Now it's eight characters wide, check it out. It's got four leading spaces. Cool. Now how do we replace those spaces with zeros? We use a replace function. S2 is equal to s2.replace, parentheses, space, end quote, comma, quote, zero. What this does is it replaces all the spaces in the string with zeros. Okay. Now when we print it out, it's gonna have all four zeros and then the ones. And there we go. Now an int in this language is a 32-bit data type. We might want it padded with 32 zeros to represent what it really looks like, right? So percent 32s. It's a 32-bit data type. It's a four-byte data type, and four times eight is 32. A long is 64 bits. So if we wanted to print out a long, we might want to pad it out with 64 zeros, right? But here's what it looks like with 32 zeros. And that's a whole bunch, right? And it's kind of, but well, we'll run with it. Okay, that's pretty cool. It's so cool, we might want to make a function out of that. Right, because I don't want to have to do all of these steps, you know, even if we didn't have the print statements in it. It's still a series of steps we have to do. And sure, we might be able to do it in one by nesting functions within functions, you know, but anyways, why don't we make this a method? So I'm going to take this stuff right here those three lines and I'm going to make a new method. Public static and what is it going to return? It's going to return a string, so capital S. It's going to take a number. 
int i. Let's paste this stuff in here. And let's return s2. Oh, I forgot to give it a name, right? Let's call it int to binary, right? There we go. So we now have a function that will take an integer and return it with the right number of bits, right? Four bits. Excuse me, four bytes, 32 bits. So int to 32 binary string, right? Maybe that's too much. Let's just call it binary 32, right? Binary 32 string. I think that'll be that. I think that's good enough. I think that na uh, name is easy enough. To, so, anyways, if we wanted to get out i and print it, right? String s is equal to binary 32 string, and then pass in i, and we could print those values out, right? System dot out dot print ln i plus a space quote space quote plus a string. We should get the same value. Wouldn't it be nifty slick if we could pass in this 32? We could if we really wanted to. We have to build a formatting string first. I'm not going to bump, but we could, right? We just have to build a string that contained this contents and the number would change based on something that was passed in, whether the user wanted an 8 bit data, 16, 32, whatever. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully it's kind of cool that we have a function that'll turn an integer into a binary string. So what are we gonna do next? We could talk about the idea of shifting left and right. What does shifting mean? If you have this number here, Let's just type in a number. Like that. Say you have that number. And you shifted it to the left by one bit. What that means is just move all the bits over. So that bit is going to move here. And that bit's going to move here. So it's going to become 0110. See why? Everything went over one to the left and it was filled in with a zero at the end, right? If you shifted it by another bit, if you shifted this over by two bits, well, then that one's gonna march over two and be in that column. And this one's gonna march over two and be in that column. And then it's gonna be back filled with zeros. Like that. Now an interesting thing to note about shifting is if you have this number, 0011, and you shift it once, you get 0110, right? You shift it again, you get 1100. So what is this equal to? Well, we've already said it's powers of two. So that's a one, that's a two, that's a four, and that's an eight. So 0011 adds up to three, because it's got a one and a two. So what is 0110? Well, it doesn't have any ones, but it has a two and a four, and so a two and a four add up to a six. Hmm, three, six. Now what is this? It doesn't have any twos, it doesn't have any fours. Excuse me, it doesn't have any ones, it doesn't have any twos, but it does have a four and it does have an eight. Four plus eight is 12. Check it out. Shifting one to the left is the same thing as doubling. So guess what shifting to the right means? It means all the bits go to the right. Say you had this number, 1,000, right? And you wanted to shift it to the right by one bit. It's not really 1,000, right? Because we're talking about binary. But anyways, it's 1,000. That number happens to be equal to eight, right? Because there's no ones, there's no twos, there's no fours, but there is an eight. So that's an eight. And what is it equal to after it shifts? Well, all the bits march to the left. And so that becomes, 0, 1, 0, 0, right? What if we shifted it twice? Come on. 
then this bit marches to the right two times, right? So it goes dun, dun, right there. What if we shifted it three times? Whoops, I copied and pasted the wrong thing. This one's gonna wander over three times to the right. One is there, there's one bit, two bits, three bits. What if we did it four bits? Well, we kind of got a problem, right? We're going to be all filled up with zeros. But let's see why. This one's going to march to there, to there, to there. That was three times, and then it's off the map, right? So let's take these numbers. 1,000 all by itself is an eight. I already said that, right? So that's an A. 0100. Well, no ones, no twos, but it's got a four in it. So that's a four. 0010. One, two. There's only a two in it, right? Because that's where the one is. There's a one in it, nothing else. And all zeros are zero. So, shifting to the right is the same thing as dividing by 2. And once you get down to 1, it's too bad. It's dividing by 2 and rounding down. Um, it's dividing by 2 and letting the bits fall off. And what do I mean by that? If you had 1011, let's figure out what that is. There's a 1 in it, there's a 2 in it, there's no 4s in it, but it's, there's an 8 in it. So a 1 and a 2 and an 8 is equal to 11. That's an 11 in base 10. So what happens if we shift that by 1? Well, then it becomes 0, 1, 0, 1, right? Because this one marched, that one moved there, that 0 moved there, that one moved there, and that one fell off the map. And so what is that equal to? There's a 1, there's no twos, but there's a four. So one and four is a five, right? And so it's just like integer math, right? If you divide five by two and they're both integers, you get an answer and it rounds it down, right? So 2.5 becomes two. So 11 divided by two is 5.5, rounded down is five. You can cause data corruption if you keep shifting past the end of your data format, right? What if we shifted it to the left here? Then it would become like that. And what is that? That's just a simple A. And we shifted it again to the left, and now we got zero, right? Because these ones marched off, one of them disappeared off the map. We just left with A. We do it one more time, we get zero. So if you shift too large for the data format to contain, then the data becomes corrupted. You get so-called overflow, which is when the data exceeds the number of bits that the uh, data type can hold. All right, so there's an operator for shifting to the left and to the right. We could take a number and shift it to the left and to the right. We have this 15 here, stored an I. How do we shift that to the left and to the right? With those stars, with those angle angles. So, let's shift I to the left one. What are you complaining about? Not a statement. So we need to capture its result in a variable. And we probably should take out the spaces here. So I is equal to I shifted left one. Now let's get its binary string and print it out again, right? S is equal to binary 32 string I. Print it out just like we did before. And we're gonna see that the bits have marched off to the left. The bits go marching one by one, all right. Right? It went to the left. 
how many could we shift until this one hit that one, right? Well, we shift 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. This is a dumb way of doing it. It's just 32 minus 5, right? So it could be shifted 37 times. Excuse me, 32 minus 5, which is 27. Well, that was shifting at once. If we shift it 27 times, it honestly may not look exactly like we expect because it's going to become a negative number, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't look like we want it. Let's just shift it 10. So we run it, right? And there they are. And they could keep marching. 27 caused it to get slightly corrupted because the number went negative, and I'll explain why it went negative. This first zero is actually known as a sign bit. And if there's a one in it, it means the number is treated as a negative number via something called two's complement. You can look up two's complement if you want to know. And so it switched the number to being negative when we shifted it by 27 bits. So if we print it out, oh, well, what do you know? I'm wrong about that. What if we shifted it 28 bits? But there we see them, right? They marched over 27. I must have had my count wrong. Oh, and it's because it's four wide, right? And so 32 minus four is 28. So if we do 28 bits, they're going to wind up being there. But I believe that we're going to get answers that we don't expect. Let's try it. 28. The first four bits are going to now be zeros, excuse me, ones. Right? But it flipped to being a negative number because of that sign bit. So two's complement. I'm not going to talk through two's complement. All right. So we know it shifted a left and shifted a right mean. What else could we do? We certainly haven't used any loops yet. What if we wanted to print out the binary values of a string? What do I mean by that? Well, firstly, we need to remember that a string is composed of ASCII characters. If I have this string, let's make a name. String name is equal to A, A, B, E. That A, just trust me on that, is a 65. That B is a 66. And that E is a 67. Why? Why in the world? It's just because this is encoded in what's known as ASCII. And in ASCII, an A is a 65, a B is a 66, and E is a 67, and then lowercase numbers are 32 more than that. So lowercase a would be 65 plus 32 is 97. That would be 98. I'm sorry, not 67. If that's an A and that's a B and a 65 and a 66, well, there's no C and D, which would be 67 and 68, so that'd be a 69. But why do I need to guess? Can we pull up an ASCII table? Using inter using Chrome? Why, yes, of course we can. So here's ASCIItable.com. ASCIItable.com is an ASCII chart. And you can look up ASCII charts anywhere. I mean, you know, you just Google ASCII charts and you'll find other ones. But if we look over here, what we see is, as I advertised, it A is a 65. A B is a 66, and an E is a 69. Why are they converted to numbers? Just because everything in computers is a number, right? If you want to save that word, A, B, E, out to a disk, it's got to save it as numbers. Well, let's prove that. Let's prove that A, B, E is 65, 66, 69. So we're going to use a loop here. I don't know why I commented these print statements out. I kind of like them, right? Anyways, 
we're going to step through every letter of this. We're going to get out A, B, and E. Now in Python, we're not doing Python, but a lot of you have taken Python. It would be as easy as writing this. For CH in name, for every character in a name. Well, we're not quite so lucky in this language. We have to pull them out by index. So we're going to use the dot caret method. Dot caret, not carrots like what Bugs Bunny eats, but the word care at with a capital A. Char at, care at. Okay. Care at zero returns an A. Care at one returns a B. Care at two returns that position, which is an E. So let's write a for loop. I'm going to use index as my subscript. So int subs, int index is equal to zero and keep running i is less than name dot length, parentheses in parentheses. Why am I calling it i? That should be called index. I'm just doing that to avoid the fact that I already used an i variable up there. So for int index is equal to zero, index is less than name dot length, index plus plus, right? Simple for loop. It's going to count zero, one, and two because the length of this string is three. Let's prove that. Let's print them out. System dot out. Wait, let's get the character out. Care ch is equal to name dot care at with a capital A parentheses index in parentheses semicolon. And we can print that character out. System dot out dot print ln print. Let's print the index number out. I plus a space plus the character. Where are these coming from? Oh, I. Man, I really wish this stuff wasn't up here anymore. I'm going to comment it out. It's confusing the issue. Okay. I don't have a variable I anymore. It's called index. My mistake. I apologize for that mistake. Because that's our index count. So, position 0 is an A, position 1 is a B, position 2 is an E. Well, let's get the ASCII value out. Int ASC for ASCII value is equal to, I'm going to cast that character to a number. That's how you extract the ASCII value out. So parentheses, INT in parentheses, CH. Let's print that out. System dot out dot print ln parentheses ASC in parentheses. Right? And so an A is a 65, a B is a 66, and an E is a 69. Let's print out a nice little table indicating that. Let's no longer print out these two print statements, I'm deleting them. Instead, system.out.printf, right? I, well, I don't know. Let's make it two characters wide. So quote percent 2D. That's how you print an integer out. Pad it out to two spaces. Because what if our name's more than 10 characters long? Probably not going to be more than 99 characters, so two digits ought to be enough. And then what's the second one? It's the character. Well, characters are only one Y, so percent one C ought to do it. I believe that's the uh, symbol for printing a character. If it doesn't come out correctly, I'll fix it. And this is another int. So I'm gonna do percent 2D, except that's not really enough. I think it might be, but no, it's probably not. Why? Because an ASCII chart, the values can go up you know, up to three digits wide. This ASCII goes up to the number 127. And actually extended ASCII goes up to the number 255. So we definitely need three digits there. So, percent 2D, percent 1C, percent 3D to print out the character. Excuse me. 
to print out the index, to print out the character, to print out the index, uh, the ASCII value. So we need three numbers to fill in the three placeholders. We need our index, we need our character, and we need the ASCII value. So we run it, and we see our cute little chart. Except I forgot to put my backslash in, so it's slammed it all together on one line. Excuse me. At least I got the percent one C correct. Let's go. And there we go, right? An A is a 65, a B is a 66, and an E is a 69. Let's add another column for the binary representation. Fortunately, we have a method up here that takes an integer and converts it to a binary, a 32-bit binary string. It's almost a little bit overzealous. We could make it eight, right? Because all we care about are bytes at this point and that single ASCII character. I'm gonna leave it the way it is. Okay, so let's get the binary string. String, I'm just gonna call it BS, cute name for it, right? For binary string. Why don't we just call it bits? That's our bit string, right? Is equal to, what's my method called? What am I doing here? I'm modifying my method when I actually want to be modifying. But anyways, so the name of my method is binary32 string and I did that change, that was dumb. We're down inside this for loop, string, bits is equal to binary 32 string version of that ASCII number. Okay, we need one more placeholder to print that out. So percent S, it's 32 characters wide, but they are all 32 characters wide, so I don't know that I necessarily need to specify the 32 there, but I'm gonna do so anyways, because I did it for all the rest of them. And by the way, that's a one and not an L. Alrighty. See, I could have done away with this one, that one there, because a character is always one, right? It's a single letter. And I could do away with this one because it's always 32. I'm gonna leave it alone like that now. Okay, and this is equal to the bits. All right, so we run it. And there we go, right? A, B, E. Let's type in a longer message. It's really kind of bugging me that these are, got so many zeros in front of them. Let's just change this to A. I'm gonna copy this method and replace it. Excuse me. Copy and paste it, change it to 32s to 8s. This means that we better add, pass in only bytes, only values of 255 or less, because they have to fit in eight bits for this to work. But if we make that mistake, it's our fault. So there we go, right? There we go. Binary each string. Now it'll only have eight bits. There we go, right? I like that better. Because a byte is a bits wide, each ASCII character could be stored in a mere byte rather than an int. An int is overkill to hold an ASCII character. Heck, if we wanted to, we could make this a byte there. But I'm not gonna. I, I guess I'd have to change that to byte as well, right? I don't see any compelling reason to do that. I'm gonna leave them as hints. So I just undid those changes. Alrighty, in some of your classes, you will encounter the idea of a Caesar's cipher. What is a Caesar's cipher? It's where you shift the value. Like if you're, and not shift anymore like the bits that I was talking, I guess I'm gonna call them moving the value, but shift is a common nomenclature for this. Move them up or down the ASCII chart so that A's become B's, 
and B's become C's, and C's become D's, and so on. Well, how do you do that? You just take their ASCII value and you add one to it. That would move it over one, you know, one, two, you know, up in a positive direction. And we could do that. Why don't we write a for loop that does that? Now, it's actually a little bit more complex than that because what if the value becomes too large? What if you have a shift value of 10, right, and you were looking at your ASCII table? And so, you know, an A became from 65 down to 75 because we added 10 to it. That's okay. Great. That's not off the ASCII table. But over here, right, the lowercase letters. If we add a Z, that's a 122 and we added 10 to it, that'd be a 132. And that's off the map, the ASCII table doesn't go that large. There are extended ASCII codes, but we don't wanna see any extended ASCII codes. So we should modify our shift value. So if it gets greater than 127, it rotates back down by subtracting a value so that it's no less than 32. So it can count all the way up to 127 just fine, right? But if we got a 128, we'd need to subtract something so that it was a 32. If we got a 129, we'd need to subtract something so that it became a 33, and so on. We don't want to get down into these control codes down here because these cannot be printed. Let's take a stab at it. Probably need another for loop. And it's going to look like this stuff, but I don't think we need the bits this time. I'm going to go ahead and copy this whole thing, but delete those last two lines of the loop. Right? But we don't need these. What we do need to do is we need a shift value telling us how far up or down the scale we're shifting. So int shift is equal to 1. Let's just do that because A's will become B's, B's will become C's, and so on. It'll be real easy to see if we got it correct. So, ASCII, ASC, plus equals the shift value. And if it's a negative shift value, it's going to go down. Same problem. If it gets below 32, we're down in the control codes, and we want to add something so that it'll be above 32. So how are we going to do that? We're going to subtract 96 from our value, or add 96 to our value. Why do I say that? because we want 168 to become 32 if we get there because there's no ASCII character that's not extended larger than 127. So if we're at 128, we want to bump it down to 32. What's the difference between the two? 68. Is that right? No, it's 96. So we're going to take whatever number we get, and if it's greater than 127, we're going to subtract 96 from it, so it'll go down here. If the number is less than 32 after we shift it, we need to bump it up into this category, so we're going to add 96 to it. And other textbooks will show different ways of it. This is how I'm going to do it. So after we have shifted it, if the ASCII value is greater than 127, that's the largest value that we want to be able to print. Right, let's go look one more time, make sure I'm not lying. Over here, yeah, 127 is a delete key. No, I'm not digging that either, right? We actually want to just only go up to 126, which means we're not going to subtract 96 from it. We're going to want to subtract, I believe, that what's the difference between 126 and 32? 95 instead of 96. So if it's greater than 126, subtract 95 from it. A is C minus equals 95. If it's less than 32, it's a problem. If A is C is less than 32, add 95 to it. And let's print it out. System, wait, we have to convert it back to a character. or a string, works either way, right? The character, C 
SDH2 is equal to, let's use casting to get the ASCII value back in a character. And we can print it out. Let's print out both the old and the new character. So we're going to print out CH and CH2. System.out.println CH plus a space plus CH2. Right. And there we go, right? A's became B's, B's became C's, E's became F's, right? Each one went up by one, up the alphabet. Let's type in something more interesting than Abe. My name is Abraham, exclamation mark. Gonna be considerably longer. It's all right. When we run it, right? My name is Abraham, who cares about the bits now? M became N, Y became Z, Spaces became exclamation marks. Name, everything was shifted up by one. N became O's, A became B's, and so on. Well, let's just build a string that consists of all of those. So we need a string to hold our encrypted text. It's not really encrypted, but it is enciphered. So why don't we make a new string called cipher? We're gonna make it an empty string and we're going to add each new character to our empty string. Don't need to print it out. Now, I honestly don't think it's going to be as easy as doing this. I'm going to compile that and it's not going to work. It did work. you got to be kidding me. Let's print the cipher out. System.out.println parentheses cipher. Well, it actually did work. You can append a space, a character, excuse me, to a string. Cool. All right. Anyways, we don't want to print it out each time, right? We just want to print out the results. So maybe on one line, we're going to print out the original text. On the next line, we're going to print the results. So I'm just going to cut that line, paste it here. But I'm also going to print the original text, which is just called S. Could have been a better name, huh? So there we go. We're going to print out S. Why is that? Syntax there. Oh, because it was called name. Well, the and calling it name is kind of idiotic, right? But I better just roll with it, right? Rather than rename everything. All right. So I'm going to run it. And my name is Abraham. Shifted one is equal to that. What if we shift it by like 17? It'll look completely different. Right? What if we shift it by negative one? Well, B's are going to become A's. And E's are going to become D's. Going down the alphabet. And there we go, right? B's became A's, E's became D's, N's became M's, right? M's became L's. Looks good. I believe it's working. Alrighty. I think that is enough. And I also think that I'm comfortable not assigning you any more homework because last week I assigned you three homework assignments. So why don't we leave this one alone? I do want you to remember though what shifting means, shifting the bits left and right. I do want you to have the idea that you have methods like two binary string. There's another one called two hex string, 
right? If you wanted to print out the hexadecimal version, which you may or may not know what it one is, system.out.println, parentheses, integer, the whole word, dot, to hex string, parentheses, the number, all right, just type in some random number like that. And it'll print it out as hexadecimal digits, which if you know what they are, great. There we go, right, and that's a hexadecimal version of that. I believe you can also do that with string.format percent x. Let's see if that works. Change it back to print f percent x. I believe that means hexadecimal string. Backslash n, end quote, comma, right, and then some number there. When it runs, it's going to produce some output. Yep. That doesn't look good. I don't think that's accurate. What if I made this 65535, which I just happen to know is all Fs in X hexadecimal. Oh, it did work. Okay, it just happened that that number that I chose didn't have any letters in it, and that's the hallmark of a hexadecimal number is it's got letters in it as well. A, B, C, D, E, you know, and F in it. Okay, so. I'd rather you know, I think, temporarily, at least, integer to hex string. What other goodies are there in integer? Integer dot to octal, great. Mm, to unsigned long, to unsigned string, to, okay, anyways. Normally we just want two string. Normally we're just converting a number to a string, right? You have a number int age is equal to 32, and you want to turn that into a string. String sh is equal to integer dot to string parentheses 32 in parentheses, excuse me, parentheses age. If we printed it out, it's gonna say that age is equal to 32, right? It's what it does. Now, I tend to take advantage of the fact that if you append anything to an empty string, it gets converted to a string automatically. Both of these convert to a string. You can use the helper class integer to convert it to a string, or you can just append that variable to an empty string. And let Java, did I say the word Python a little bit back? I'm not sure. And let the word Java convert this to a string to append to that, so that the result will be a string. Either way works. Two ways of converting an integer to a string. Right? And here is a way of convert an integer to a hexadecimal string. And we already know binary string, so I'm not going to make a comment as to that effect. All right. I hope this was enlightening in some fashion. And see you next lecture.